mics. I'm trying to get all the custom made it. That's an Oak Cliff word that we use in Oak Cliff, Texas. You know, Oak Cliff, that's my hood. But, you know, I would like to send a shout out to Greg Hasty. I uh, just got through writing the forward to his book, Oak Cliff Missing Pieces. And today we're going to be putting together the missing, missing pieces on health, on the Commission Healthy Nation. That's right, CNN, the Commission Nation Network. This radio show, podcast show, is the best radio podcast show from Como to the Congo. If you're from Fort Worth, you know where Como's at. And if you're part of the world, which clearly you are because you're listening to us on FBRN.us, you should know where the Congo's at. And if you don't know, you need to ask somebody. So, you know, we got this show going on, and we've been talking about, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a little a little things that we're going to talk about today is keeping our nation healthy. And we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Sherry Byers today and uh, Ms. Dolores Myers today from Foremost Family Health Centers, uh, which is located in uh, sunny South Dallas, where the sun never stops shining. The sun never stops shining. And uh, we also uh, have uh, with us a, a good friend of mine, a frat brother of mine, a, a brother, a brother, Maurice Washington, who's going to be here to talk for the first couple of minutes uh, uh, regarding an event that is coming up uh, next week. But we want you to tune in uh, on to our sister networks, which is the YouTube channel that we have, Ed Gray, the Commish Radio, and also uh, tune in to IG Live, which you're already there, and also uh, tune in to the Roku channel. So that's all I got to say right now. Brother Washington, you're here. Yes, What's sir. going on, man? Not too much, brother. Always good to be here with you. Well, good to have you here. Good to have you here, man, because uh, what we talk about all the time is making sure the members of the community is, uh, well, that we're still here. And COVID is still here as well, and I notice you have your mask on and everything. Yes, sir. And so uh, we appreciate that as well. I've I'm already been uh, boosted up and everything, two, three with times, I think I'm sitting in a booster chair already. You but you know, uh, you, I understand people are still getting COVID and everything. Yes, so uh, you're here for uh, not COVID, but you're here for a, a, another another uh, a subject that's coming on. We also want you to stay tuned and and, and stay seated as well because we're going to be talking about diabetes. So tell me wh what's what's going on. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ed, and, and appreciate you as always. As I reached out to you a couple of weeks ago and. Uh, and uh, was trying to get you to uh, donate to a fundraiser. Uh, oh, you said trying to get me trying to donate. Trying to. Put me out on Front Street. Trying to, no. The address all, is already all, out there. Oh, good stuff. No, you're my man. But, uh, no, I'm here today, Ed. Uh, again, my name is Maurice Washington. I was uh, approximately about four years ago uh, this month, I was diagnosed uh, with a form of leukemia. Uh, initial diagnosis came by... Uh, form of having a kidney stone and I was uh, in the emergency room and was uh, was asked if I was aware of my uh, white blood count mm -hmm. and and at the time I was not aware that it had begun to be much lower than what the uh, the normal readings uh, should be and so thankful to the high and the above that uh, again as I call it the kidney stone was a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, with that uh, knowledge and understanding I was moved on to my primary care doctor who ran some further tests on my blood work and uh, from there was uh, moved over to my uh, uh, oncologist's office who uh, diag diagnosed me that later that summer in 2019 with a rare form of leukemia, Harris cell leukemia. And uh, it is one of the rarest, probably about 3% of the of folks uh, actually get this. And there's a small number of things that, that go along with that. and so. I was just about to turn 50 in that December that year, so I, I figured that was my ticket or entry into uh, the 50 uh, rim. But uh, with all that being said, uh, it was a scary moment. There was a lot that had to go on at that time. I was unaware of blood cancer, uh, specifically uh, leukemia. I had heard of it but was not fully aware, so I had to uh, jump through some hoops, get some things done, some tests ran. In the summer of 2019, I had, uh, had to go with a, a week of chemo uh, that particular summer and so uh, during that time as I was going through my chemo I was asking the Lord to uh, just provide me with perspective on what this meant in my life and, and what I needed to uh, to do with it uh, once I came through 
And so one of the first things I did was I purchased uh, these wristbands uh, here. And uh, that was the first step. And um, later that fall, uh, what I'm about to participate in next summer, I mean next weekend, excuse me, uh, which is the uh, Dallas Big Climb, uh, which raises funds uh, for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And so this is my fourth climb. Uh, I've been blessed to approximately raise about $12,000 uh, individually uh, this year. And so I'm here just to uh, shine light on um, leukemia uh, specifically. Um, again, as I said, and I know in our community as it relates to blood cancers and those things, we don't think of it. I know sickle cell is probably the biggest thing that is acknowledgement of that that we know of in the African-American community, but black, blood cancer is big as well. Unfortunately, uh, myself and Ed, uh, one of our fraternity brothers, uh, lost his son uh, probably about nine months after I got diagnosed. His son was diagnosed later that 2019 uh, and, and passed uh, that following September. Uh, so it really hit home. And so this is personal to me. Um, and as I said, when I sent Ed the, uh, the fundraiser deal, we're having a joke with it. But to me, it is very personal. Uh, it's bigger than me. And anything that I put myself into is always going to exceed that. And that's the way I live my life. And so uh, I'm just blessed to have folks that are here to support me. Uh, during that time, I had my fraternity brothers, had my family and, and friends that came out during my chemo week that stood with me and still stand with me today. And so I just want to encourage folks to, uh, you know, go out. One of the things I did learn through that, there is an organization called Be The Match. And uh, that is another, and that the young man that passed, his family had a, uh, they actually had, had a, um, an event uh, to do that. And so I would encourage folks uh, from 18, I think, to 40, 45, uh, to go out and, uh, you know, go ahead and, 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 and do that in regards to bone marrow. Uh, it just takes uh, not too much time to go out and, and make sure, because there's not enough African-American bone marrow and things that are in the system. You register it, and those folks that have it, uh, if they um, or if they connect to that or they link up with the you know with a percentage, uh, it allows them a better opportunity. And of course, for us and most things, you know we're maybe not as knowledgeable. Or understand that when the things come, because there's quite a few people over the last couple of years that have had blood cancer who now understand it, and so now the importance of it. So whatever organizations, family, I think it's just important for us to just to get knowledge around. And I know sometimes. Knowledge is the key, and sometimes without having that, we don't know until, again, it becomes personal for myself in regards to knowing what's available to you. And so, uh, long story short, my purpose here, again, like I said, I will be climbing uh, 60 to 5 to 70 uh, flights uh, next weekend in the uh, Bank of America Plaza. Uh, so pray for a brother. You know, I'm 53 years old. <laughs> I was, uh, and so we're four years removed from that for 50. Uh, but it is, uh, it, it, it is a, uh, an important cause, and it's just a little bit that I can give back in regards to that. So I'm in preparation of that. I'm doing my walking. had my jump rope on yesterday, and so uh, I got a week to, to get my mind. But it's really the, the mental over the physical. And so uh, I hope this time next week I'll probably be uh, somewhere trying to get, uh, you know, <laughs> get, get myself together in regards to just recouping. Um, but, again, uh, please go out to uh, the – Leukemia and Lymphoma, the LAS.org, uh, Big Climb. And if you desire to make donations to that at any point, like I said, that's what we'll be doing. And uh, again, Ed, I appreciate you, my brother, for just spotlighting and highlighting uh, this, uh, the health, which is very important, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you, you man. Appreciate, appreciate you, brother. You. As always, uh, we on the uh, commission uh, radio show, which started uh, about 10 years ago, we started in the community, and we have always as we say, CNN, the real CNN, because we are in your uh, neighborhood, we are in your community, we're in your hood because we never left it. Uh, that's the reason why it is important that people uh, also tune in and share it. As you know, Facebook, uh, they have what they call shadow banning, and shadow banning uh, simply means that if we were fighting on MLK Boulevard, they would go ahead and push that out, but we have good health on MLK Boulevard, and that's the reason why I have these two sisters here today pushing good health in the neighborhood. And we want you to push this out as well and share it as well. Thank you, Fred, again for coming on the show. Yes, Stick sir. around, man, because yep. we're talking about health. We might as well have you just 
kick it with us, you know? Yes, sir. Let's kick the narrative, as we would yes, say. Sir. Uh, as Tupac used to say, uh, introduce the topic and drop it. The topic that we're talking about today is health. Uh, <laughs> y'all are here. Yes, we are. Y'all are here. Yeah, all right, so I want you to introduce yourselves uh, to the, uh, the public and everything. We got this uh, camera going on on them now. Yeah. It's going to split over there. I see you got you got Angelo got skills. You got two cameras set up over there. Look at this, <laughs> man. It's a long way from uh, back when we first started over at Fishbowl when I was holding up the the uh, <laughs> telephone and, and was looking at me myself on Facebook Live and everything. We got actual films, cameras, everything like that. We'll start with Dr. Sherry Bowers. Tell us about yourself. Um, I am a podiatrist. I've been practicing for over 25 years. Um, and one Closer to the mic. Oh, okay. And one of the biggest things that I see in is diabetes. Um, I have always worked in the community. I did house calls for many, many, mm -hmm. many years. I worked in the assisted living and nursing homes. Um, and now I'm at Foremost Family Health Centers, and I've been there for almost four years. So uh, that's formerly the MLK. Yes, the Martin Luther King okay. Uh, Center. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And yourself? Yes, my name is Dolores Myers, and um, I'm a dietitian. I've been with uh, Foremost since um, April of 2019, so I'm coming up on four years and so I've worked as a registered dietitian um, in different settings, hospitals, clinical, um, and other community um, um, areas uh, for nutrition and uh, I'm seeing more and more of our people developing pre-diabetes and diabetes um, and a lot of the health problems that we have, we can, they can be delayed, um, or even prevent it with just some lifestyle changes. All right, okay, so diabetes, as, as the old folks say, you don't know nothing about being old because oh, yeah, you're just 54. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in my, in my 50s, I spent 10 years there. <laughs> but uh, I'm in my 60s now and I remember being six years old, we used to call diabetes the sugars. The sugars, you know, it's like he got the sugar, you know. Yes. You know, that means he can't do this, he can't do that, you know. Yeah. Okay, tell me, what is the sugar? What is diabetes? Well, what it is is when we eat, whatever we eat, our body breaks it down into sugar called glucose. Mm. You say whatever we eat. Whatever we eat, it breaks it down into into these small little molecules that our body, our least small units that our body can use, and it's called glucose, okay? And what happens is in order for our body to absorb it, we have another thing in our body called insulin. And, and we have an organ called the pancreas that secretes the insulin. But with diabetes or sugar, we have a resistance to the insulin, so our body's not absorbing the sugar, so there's a, a high amount of sugar floating in our blood, okay? Uh, or the other thing is if we don't secrete enough insulin, our body's not producing enough of that, we don't get to absorb all that sugar. And so it, it just floats around in our blood. But that sugar floating around in our blood is very unhealthy and you might even say toxic because it damages blood vessels, it damages nerves, it affects every part of the body. And so that's why it's so important to talk about it because initially you may not know you have it, may not feel anything with it initially and you don't start having certain signs or symptoms until later. Mm. And it is important to get, a, get it under control immediately. Okay. What is pre-diabetes and what is diabetes? It, it, either one can answer the question. So pre-diabetes is when the blood sugar is tested 
and the person has fasted, and the blood sugar level is about 126. Okay. We'll take um, notes. So that means that person is on their way to developing type 2. Hmm. Okay. Now, you said type 2. Yes. What's type type 1 and type 2? Then what's that? So, so there's pre-diabetes, okay. there's type 2 diabetes, but then there's also something called type 1. Hmm. And type 1 is the type of diabetes that occurs in usually children, and that's where the pancreas makes no insulin at all, hmm. or young adults. Um, but the pancreas makes no insulin, so they have to take insulin. Hmm. They have to take insulin. Mm -hmm. And type 2 is... Well, you don't have to take insulin. Right. Most of the time, they're taking um, oral medications. And sometimes, though, if the blood sugars are too high, they'll need insulin until we can get good control of those blood sugars in type 2. Mm -hmm. In type 2. So type 1 is when you're younger, type usually. 2, usually. Mm -hmm. And type 2 is when you... Adults. Adults. Usually. Okay. I was about to say older. Okay. And the key thing is, like she was saying, with type 1, you have to take insulin. Type 2, you may not have to. You may end up if you don't get it under control. But so. What's under control? Okay. Normal ranges, if you go to take the blood test at the doctor's office, a normal range should run between 70 and 99 if you haven't eaten anything. Mm -hmm. So if you know you go to the doctor and they say don't eat Ask. before you show up. Mm -hmm. So that should be 70 to 99. <clears throat> but if they check it and it's 80 to 130 and you haven't eaten anything, um, that's, that's pretty good. But if it's above that, when you're getting it towards the 140, 150, that's too high. That's too high, so they will diagnose you then with diabetes, especially if you're like 145, 150, up in there. You, you will definitely, if you're fasting, haven't eaten anything, and it's that high, that's too high. Okay, so any of uh, the folks that are listening in right now uh, on Facebook Live, if you want to go ahead and uh, put in the chat, put in a question, feel free to put in a question. Uh, this is very, very special to me to, to talk about diabetes because a lot of members of my family have diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, including myself. Okay. So, uh, full disclosure, I have diabetes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm, 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 I'm familiar with that. But, y y you know, a, a, a lot of black folk, I'm, I'm, I know someone's going to say, y'all, we're talking about black folk. But, see, there's a reason, folks, why I say black folk because... I, it's not anything against anybody else. It's that that's the first person I see every morning when I wake up right. is a black person. So that's what I say, black people. So full disclosure again, I'm black. So now, <laughs> that being said, why do black people have diabetes in record numbers like we have? Well, there are... I'm going to leave the big red alone. <laughs> right. In the honey bun. Right. Uh, a, a big part of it in a couple studies that I've read and looked into and just in being around it for so many years, education. Absolutely. Education mm -hmm. about what it is, what it means, and and being able to recognize that it could be an issue and going to get checked. Hmm because so many have it and don't know it. Actually, statistics are that 37.3 million Americans, 11.3% of the population have it, but a large number don't have any clue that they have it. It's the uh, 8.5 million are undiagnosed. Wow. Well, that's because we don't go to the hospital, or not hospital, right. go to the doctor, or we don't go to the foremost Clint. There you That's go. right. Okay, we, we, we put right. that plug in for that. But I will say, add one other thing, talking about African Americans in particular. Um, we have 12.1% of that number. That's a large number. They say Native Americans are first with 14.5%. Mm -hmm. 
African Americans 12.1, Hispanics 11.8, Asian Americans 9.5, and our white brothers and sisters 7.4. And that's because of diet? It's because of diet, it's because of education, mm -hmm. it's because of um, not going to the doctor, lack of health care, it's a whole lot of things coming together. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are here, that's why Foremost is there, to educate, to and, help. And yes. that's why we want you to come back as well. It, it, the interview is not even halfway over and I want you to come back again mm -hmm. because this is important. This is going to be an ongoing uh, trend that we're going to be talking about on the uh, radio podcast. As we talk about leukemia, we talk about diabetes, we, 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 we talk about diet, you know. So let's, let's, let's kick the knowledge here a little bit on diet. Okay, now we talk about food deserts that exist. And then in the food desert, we have convenience stores. Mm -hmm. And the convenience stores are very inconvenient because of the kind of food mm -hmm. they sell in the convenience stores. They don't have fresh food. They have pork skins. Wait a minute, what? I was. <laughs> okay, there you go. Pork skins. I, 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 I'm going to say that. You know, we're talking about diabetes, but pork skins. They market pork skins and they say <laughs> it's protein. Mm -hmm. So you 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 it's not no sugar in it, so it's a healthy alternative to eating that honey bun I was talking about. So either way I'm messed up. Because the pork skins has pork in it, obviously because that's pork, and it's cured with salt, and then I, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm from Oak Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I put hot sauce on my pork skin. <laughs> That's okay. And you make sure it sizzles a little bit. <laughs> I don't do it no more, though, because I, I don't eat it no more. But that's what we have in, in the convenience stores. And then we have all these different types of sodas that go along with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I took a... I took a, a a, a, a tour, if you will, of, of, of uh, convenience stores that you can see them on every block. I'm not going to mention their names. But I went into one in Lancaster. Notice I said Lancaster. I didn't say Lancaster. Lancaster, so you know I'm from the hood. Mm -hmm. So Lancaster. Lancaster. So I went there, and they had, I may, named the sodas. They had Big Red. Mm -hmm. I mean, we... Black folk love big red. That's something about red. See, y'all got red yeah, on right now. Red right now. <laughs> <laughs> so something with about red that we like. So big red soda comes in there, and we'll go ahead and we get that, and we, we'll guzzle that, and we go to another convenience store, and we'll get that big drink they have. I ain't going to mention the name of that, but it's a big drink. Mm -hmm. It's like McDowell's, right? Big uh -huh. drink. <laughs> right. We'll get that. And, and then we develop diabetes or high blood pressure off of this, this diet thing that we have going on. What, what do we do? I mean, we just got, I could, like I said, the convenience store is so inconvenient. What do we do? So when it comes to nutrition, um, just eating sugar is not going to cause diabetes. So just eating those cookies or that ice cream, that's not going to cause oh, good. diabetes. No, you didn't have to look at me like that. Okay. However, however, it's it's a it's a um, it's a totality of practices, hmm. healthy lifestyle practices or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to nutrition, when I mention the pork skins at the convenience store, actually to be honest, really there is there are no carbs or very little carbohydrates no carbs. in um, pork skins, but it's the sodium, hmm. and that's that's related to high blood pressure. Right. So I miss one, I get the other. Exactly, exactly. So when it comes to diabetes and, and nutrition, um, like Dr. Bowers mentioned earlier, the food that we eat turns into glucose or sugar. So most, most of it is carbohydrates that turn into the sugar, right? And carbs come from, come from healthy foods and not so healthy foods. So you have, 
you have your rice and your breads and your pastas, any type of cereal, whether it's cereal in a box, a, a healthy brand cereal versus frosted fr flakes, um, hot cereal, chips, pretzels, popcorn, any type of cracker, fruit is a carbohydrate, beans, lentils. So notice the healthy food that I'm naming. Milk has, a carbo has carbohydrates in it. So now I haven't even mentioned sugar. Mm. So sugar, anything with sugar is a carbohydrate. So your candy cakes, cookies, pies, donuts, ice cream. Gummy bears. Gummy bears, gummy worms, <laughs> Snickers. Mm. So now <laughs> I haven't even mentioned the sugary drinks. Sweet tea, lemonade, Hawaiian punch, Kool-Aid, um, all the coffee. Is this the Kool-Aid that you have and that you add the sugar to it? Because, <laughs> <laughs> again, we're talking, uh -huh. this is a, That's this correct. Is, this is black. That's yeah. correct. Okay, yeah. Old-fashioned Kool-Aid. Don't yeah. forget those sports drinks. Uh. And the sports drinks, mm. the Gatorade. So a lot of times my patients will say, well, I don't drink sodas anymore, but I drink Gatorade. And so Gatorade still has sugar. It's still not water. And really, Gatorade is only needed when we have sweated profusely. We don't need Gatorade. It's only when we lose those electrolytes when we need to replace them. But it's not, it should be, it should not be a standard drink for me. Water is my standard beverage. It should be everyone's beverage. Okay, I drink water now. I drink the water and the, uh, the, 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 the flavored water. The flavored glad, beverage. And I'm glad you mentioned that. And when you say the flavored, are you talking about sugar-free? Yes. Okay. So a lot of times um, patients will do the sugar freeze. Sparkling. Because they still. Sparkling. sparkling. Mm -hmm. They just, I, I need, I, I'm pushing them to drink water and even to get away from the sugar freeze. Okay. Now, uh, this past month, I started dropping some of that and started okay. just drinking water itself. Okay. So. Uh, so I just started doing it. I just want to be around a little bit longer to uh, harass people uh, <laughs> on, on my radio podcast as I did you ladies earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> so now this, this, this diet that, that we have, you, you mentioned a whole bunch of things earlier that just took the fun out of actually eating rice. You know, and, 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 and bread, and, and, and you know, I mean, what, what, what to do? I mean, how, how do you do it? Moderate or uh, how do you go about doing it? So, um, so as soon as I tell patients that carbs come from rice and pasta and bread, they say, well, I can't eat it. Yep. And that's not what I'm saying at all. Because that's what we, they're hearing. We, mm -hmm. That's exactly what they're hearing. We need carbohydrates because carbohydrates, mm -hmm. it's a major right. nutrient. So if it's major, mm -hmm. we need it along with protein and fat every single day. So everything that you and I drink and eat, it's going to give us one of the three or any combination. So we're going to get protein from it, carbs. We're going to get fat from it. The problem is in America, we don't move enough. We don't exercise deliberately. Mm -hmm. We don't set time aside to exercise. Exercise is medicine. It helps blood sugars to come down. And then we eat big portions of food, mm. like we eat too much. And remember, when Dr. Bowers talked about the, the food turning into glucose, when we eat this big portion of food, blood sugars are going high and high and high because we're, our portions are huge. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me, I thought that was just the itis. You mean the sugar level went up high? That's the reason why I passed out? The itis, you know, uh, oh, this is a cultural moment, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I realize some of the people that are listening here don't know what I'm talking about. So let me do Break a sidebar. Down. Just uh, the, the cultural, uh, yes. the cultural <laughs> moment here. Uh, in, in the African-American community, there is a... There is a phrase meaning I have the itis, which is it's not a disease. It's, it means simply put that that person has ingested a large quantity of food that allows them to uh, be tired and, as we would say, pass out. That doesn't mean they passed out literally. <laughs> it just meant that they just feel really comfortable that they uh, go to sleep. Is that a, Fred, is that pretty well what the yeah, itis yeah. is? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I just want to make sure. All right, so back to our regular scheduled interview. <laughs> <laughs> so now, <laughs> so th once you get to Ida's, that that that's that's what that is, isn't it? Um. So we eat too much. Mm. We eat too much. We eat too much, and our portions are too big. And you so get the itis. And you get the itis. Pass out. Uh, and you you pass okay. out. Yeah. <laughs> and you're no good. Right. For a little bit. For a little bit. Um. And that that means the portion sizes. I'm I'm exactly. stay with me. Exactly. Portion sizes. I'm with you on this. Uh, all exactly. that deliberate stuff was for for effect for people listening. So. We need to cut back on those portion sizes where we don't get the itis so we won't draw up our blood sugar. So eventually, Absolutely. then when we do go to Foremost Family Health Centers located on MLK, mm -hmm. that we won't get into that situation where we get labeled pre-diabetic. That's correct. That will lead us to being type 2 diabetic. Absolutely. Diabetic. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. See? All right. Now, I'm going to share with you this as well. Uh, I learned about diabetes from a man at uh, MLK Clinic uh, by the name of Ron Springs. Mm -hmm. He used to play football for the Dallas Number Cowboys. 20. 20. So Ron Springs and, and I had a conversation because I was a guest of, of uh, the director of Foremost. Uh, Ron told me, he said, Ed, there's no such thing as a pre-diabetic. Either you have diabetes or not. You need to treat yourself. This is what he told me. I mean, uh, he said, and, and keep in mind when, when Brother Springs told me that, his legs had already been amputated. Wow. He was blind. But he was, when he was talking about that, he was talking about how diabetes had affected him and how that was part of what caused that. So he told me about being pre-diabetic because my mother was diabetic. And I said, well, I don't have it. Like most black people do, I don't have it. I went to the doctor, the doctor said I didn't have it. Well, he said, well, if you don't have it and your mother have it, you need to treat yourself as if you might get it. That's right. So what do we need to do if we consider ourselves pre-diabetic, even though we don't? What do we need to do lifestyle changes? Well, I, everything that Ms. Myers does in talking about diet is huge. Exercise is huge. Hmm. Following up with your prim primary care doctor is huge. Hmm. And yes, podiatry foot doctor. You mentioned that he had amputation of both legs. That's where me and other podiatrists come into play. We will work with you. A lot of us will check that sugar when you come in to see where it is, but then work with you to help prevent or try to prevent these amputations and catastrophic things from happening because what happens when that sugar is too high, it affects our circulation and it can destroy and wear down those blood vessels. So you have poor circulation and what's the furthest thing from your heart? Your feet. So it's, it's gotta travel far, but now the blood vessels aren't working as well. So that's one. Then, the sugar circulating around also affects the nerves. So then we have a lot of people that will say, my feet don't hurt. Well, if we check the sugar sometimes, and you'll see that there may be a little sore or something, but they never felt it because those nerves have been damaged from all that sugar circulating around. So the diabetes messes with the circulation, messes with the nerves, and we end up with this perfect storm to cause damage mm -hmm. to not just the feet, but to the hands, the eyes, all your organs. Mm -hmm. And in podiatry, what we do, we want you to come see us once, at least once a year. But I prefer my diabetics to see me once every three months. Let me check your feet. 
let me be the one to trim those nails for you and make sure that it's done properly and that I don't see any pressure points. Because if you've lost feeling, well, you don't feel the pressure points. People have had such bad problems with losing the feeling in their feet that they can have a sore on the bottom and not know it. Um, so that's when I tell patients, make sure you check your feet every day. If you can't bend down there to see it, then you sit in front of a full length mirror and put your foot up so you can see it or put a mirror, a handheld mirror on the floor and lift your foot up so you can see or have somebody else look. Because with proper care and a lot of prevention and having these feet checked on a regular basis, the littlest thing, we can catch it as medical professionals and work to get it better, but if you don't feel it, you don't know, or you try to do what I call bathroom surgery <laughs> and take care of it yourself by pouring peroxide on it, pouring iodine on it, pouring camphophenic on it, all these different things that we know about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those okay. are not bad things. Right. But when you're diabetic, you need to move on All and right. let a professional take care of it. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Angelo, can we take a quick break and let's play some of our local music and give us a page break and set the uh, cameras on the whole uh, table? And we'll be right back.
back again, Commish Radio Show. You're listening to the exciting sounds of Zamil. That's right, Zamil from uh, well, Oak Cliff. That's an Oak Cliff type thing, you know. I've just finished up uh, reading a, a book, Paved Away, which is the infrastructure policy and racism in an American city by Colin Yarborough, and just also, uh, well, just also wrote a forward to. Uh, uh, missing pieces. That's the story of Oak Cliff, and all that this past week, and in between that, uh, brother Kenzie Moore, I can't get my dissertation done because I keep writing this other stuff. So we got somebody in the audience out there, uh, Angelo. You may want to get some guys walking through and everything. I, he just walked through. I don't know who he is. Uh, maybe a Trump supporter. I don't know who he is. It's a dangerous day around here these days. We'll be. Please check. Please check. You know. It's, we're talking about healthy nation here, Commission Healthy Nation. Uh, foremost Family Health Centers, as I guess here, they have agreed tentatively to come back uh, for the next couple of, uh, well, ongoing, if you will. I mean, we're talking about diabetes and everything, and they trying to get me to give up my pork skins and my <laughs> big red. Moderation. 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 She had me checking my feet and everything. Mm -hmm. Told me I had to campo for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know. I know. My grandma used to, you know. That's that's how you know you're getting older. You know. You know you're getting older because well, you, you start smelling like campo for me. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> I told you when you got here, this is going to be a different kind of show. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. I like told I said, you. This is, why, this is why this show is what it is. That's why people actually pay to come on the show because they want to get the word out <laughs> and everything. And if you want to get the word out, feel free to uh, go ahead and, and uh, share this as well. And also uh, donate as well uh, right above the scroll. Uh, we do accept donations yeah. because we is retired now. We 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 need cash app donations. So it's cash app Gray Vision there. So go ahead and do that as well. So as we go to a close here, because uh, we have another show the second hour coming on, uh, uh, Dr. Byers and Miss Myers. Uh, this. When does it end with us and diabetes? I mean, you know, can we turn, can we turn the corner to uh, a healthy nation? Can we do that? I believe we can. And it's a matter of, like we said, not just getting the information, but doing something with it. Um, it's like, you know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. I mean, you can get the information, but if you don't do something about it, nothing's going to change. So that means, what are the things we mentioned? Eating right, exercising, going to the doctor, following the instructions, and checking your feet and things yourself. Check your sugar at home. All those things put together can change the tide. Okay, I checked my sugar the other day. Sugar was at, y'all ready? Lean back. There we go. Way back. <laughs> uh, so it was at 140. Oh, that was fasting. Okay. You know, not so horrible. so it's not horrible. Mm -hmm. you know, not great, but not, not great. horrible. Okay. And I, I, I checked with another family member. His was at 200 in the morning time. <coughs> that, that's really that, that's not, not good, huh? Okay. Yes. All right. 200, when you're getting to 200, you need immediate help. Immediate. Immediate help. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not waiting two months. Mm -hmm. You need to call the doctor right then. And, like, I need to get in. My sugar is 200. And, like, no, don't put me off till next week. I need I need to sit, get something done now. Okay. So that number. Two hundred is that? That's that's like a, that's the bogey where you go. Oh, this is not good. Uh, yes. That's like you driving your car and and, and, and you get to the, that E. Right. Where mm -hmm. You need more gas, and you say, "I think I can get to the gas station." Exactly. You you need to hurry up. Get to the gas. Get to the gas. Don't pass the one you don't like. Because mm -hmm. you this is closer <laughs> to home. You mm -hmm. go to that one. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's that's good and useful to know as as well. So. 
once this this deal that we're talking about exercising, I mean, I, how can you exercise if you can't walk? I mean, you know, I'm having a hard time walking right now myself these days. It's bad enough being not need, but now, <laughs> but now what you get not, huh? not need, not needed. <laughs> <laughs> so another cultural thing. We're late into the show. We're not gonna go there. All right. So we, today, yeah, we teach. It's a teaching moment. It's like Obama. You say this is gonna be a, a teachable moment. Oh. Yeah, you know. You know? <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, we 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 we. we how how are you gonna do it? Cause I've also checked my feet and everything is is well and and I, that can't for for neat thing. Like, well, you have me going to the store buying something. Uh, she but, took us back. Yeah, way back, way yeah. lean back yeah. again, way yeah. back again. So yeah, you know, and, and and checking your feet that's that's very crucially important as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because the the amputation rate wow. when you have the high sugar. You have poor circulation because of the high sugar. You mm -hmm. have very little or no feeling sometimes mm -hmm. because of the high sugar. <clears throat> All of those things together, you end up losing toes, half your foot, losing your leg. And those things can, we can help to decrease the amount of those things happening. And the statistics support it. You mm -hmm. go get your regular checkup, get your feet checked at least once a year. But like I said, with my patients, once you come in and I check things out every three months, mm. come in. Let me check your feet. Let me trim your toenails. The slightest little cut with diabetes can turn into something big if not treated. Okay. And because with diabetes, it also decreases your uh, ability to heal very well, which is also why we, we mentioned, this is not related to everything, but it is, with diabetes, you need to get vaccinated. The flu shot, the COVID shot, the pneumonia shot, all of those things are important because your body can't fight off um, a lot of infection as well as people that don't have diabetes. All right, and COVID. How does this affect affect diabetes? Oh, you're at risk. It it will manifest worse a lot of times in people with diabetes, mm -hmm. and that's why, in the heat of it, you kept hearing about older people, mm -hmm. people with diabetes, people with high blood pressure. All of those things affect how your body can fight off infection. So it's important to get vaccinated for all these things. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd like to thank you for coming on the uh, Commish Radio Show for appearing here this day and drove all the way out here to Bedford, Texas, got your passport and everything from you MLK, you yeah, know, to Bedford. You know, hey, it's a long drive, but it's well worth the knowledge that we're kicking to everybody uh, to be here as well. So I would like to have you to come back again. Okay. Uh, so thank you for joining us on the Commish Radio Show. Angelo, we're about ready for our number two. And as you can see, I am an artist and I'm sensitive about my show. It's right on time because I'm always on time and we'll see you guys next time. See you later.